Never Stop Learning, week 198. We're going to take a quick look at layer styles in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014. All right, so this is actually an old feature, but it's kind of forgotten about. So uh, I wanted to show you guys how it works really quick. What's going on with layer styles is if you double click on a layer, you're going to have access to layer styles and you could save these off. Over here, you see how this is highlighted, and that's where we're seeing pretty much the beginning of it. Right here, you can change the blend modes, opacities, and we have a advanced blending over here. But the fun stuff would be like playing around with the bevel and boss, your different uh, glows, any kind of pattern overlay, drop shadows, and stuff like that. Now, if we come over here to the top of the stack, you're going to see styles. Clicking on that is going to highlight this feature and show the different styles we have listed over here. Now, these are the default styles and one that ship with Adobe Photoshop. And these are the ones you're going to see as soon as you launch Photoshop. If you want to make any changes to them, come over here to where we have this little gear. Click on that, and it's going to give you access to resetting the styles, loading new styles, saving, and replacing styles. Now, that's a pretty interesting section here. So if you guys think it'd be a good video, just let me know in the comments. Now, over here, this is going to change the view. Uh, commonly, it's seen as a small thumbnail, but you can switch over to a large thumbnail, a small list, click it on it, see now you see a, a little thumbnail with it along with the name, but basically whatever view you want, you can switch it over here. All right, next we have this section over here. These are different libraries of layer styles that ship with Photoshop. So we have some um, like abstract styles. If you want to work on some buttons, we have uh, buttons, glass buttons. You might want to work with web styles when you're working with those as well. Now, text effects, those are pretty fun. Uh, you have two different libraries for those. And if you're working with images, you also have photographic and image effects here. Now, some of them, you probably won't know what they are right away because the name isn't as descriptive, but you have uh, DP styles and KS styles. Now I've actually used these a couple times and they're, they're pretty cool for some images. So clicking on this, you're gonna get this window here. Now this says replace current styles with styles from KS styles and it's asking you that. So if you click OK, you're gonna replace these styles you have listed here. If you hit cancel, it's not gonna do anything. If you hit append, it's gonna add the KS styles at the end of these styles. So I'm gonna click OK to replace them. And now we have these guys listed here. Now, unfortunately, hovering over them isn't going to give you any helper text in this mode, but I'll show you where that comes up later on. Now, I'm going to move this guy off to the side. Uh, I doubt these will look good with this image, but just to show you what happens, when you click on one of these, now all of these blending options, whatever was stored in there, is going to get loaded on here. So these are just presets, settings that have already been saved off in a different project. All right. So you might find some interesting ones here. That looks pretty cool. All right, back in here, you also have, uh, let's see, DP styles. And I think uh, there was just two with those. Yeah, so it's like red goo or something like that. All right, so just play around with them so you get a better idea of what's going on with them. But honestly, I use mostly like buttons and text effects or the photographic effects. So I'm going to hit cancel to get out of this. And I'll show you another way to work with this. If we come over here to the window menu, scroll down, you're going to find styles. Click on that. And then it's going to bring up the styles panel for you. And check this out. It's already showing uh, the last styles we had loaded earlier. So if I hover over them, I get some helper text and it lets me know what's going on here. This is going to be a water drop. And over here, this is red goo. Over here in the flyout menu, you see this is the same information we found under that um, gear earlier. All right, so let's take a look. I want to use a photographic effect because I'm using a photograph here. Now Photoshop is asking me, do I want to append or replace? I want to replace, so click OK to replace them. Now these are all the different photographic styles. If I hover over them, it's going to tell me what this is. So right here, this is a negative. Over here, we have a purple overlay, a stucco, sepia tone, so all kind of different photographic effects. Over here in the flyout menu, I'm going to choose a different one. This time I'm going to go with image effects. So clicking on that, instead of replacing it, I want to append it. So I'm going to click on append, and now I have this awesome library of uh, different styles that are actually going to work with my image here. All right, so let's uh, choose a couple of these. If I were to click on one, you see we have a gradient overlay applied to our image. If I double click on gradient overlay, it takes us directly to that gradient overlay layer style, and we can make whatever changes we want to it. I hit cancel to get out of that. All right, let's uh, cruise through this a little bit more. When I hover over this, it tells me what it is. This is a puzzle. So if I click on that, check this out over here in the layers. It's showing me that it's messing with the bevel emboss. If I double click on effects this time, 
instead of taking me directly to bevel and boss, it's bringing me to the blending options, the little default section here. So I hit cancel to get out of that. Now, if you're noticing, every time I'm choosing a new one of these guys, like right here we have overlay with gold, it's replacing the old uh, style that we had applied to this layer. All right, so next I got this guy over here. It's a sepia tone and I like that. This is a color overlay effect. Over here, I have this uh, circular vignette. So when I click on that, you see that one's replaced and this time it's a gradient overlay. Now, because it's not using the same effect, I could actually combine these two without having to override any of the effects. All right, so I have this one activated already. So why don't I just come back over here to the styles panel. Now, if I click on it without any modifiers, you already know it's gonna replace it. So let's hold down the shift key, click on this guy, and now you see they've been combined over here in the layers panel, but we wanna make some edits to this guy, right? Remember, if you double click on effect, it's gonna take you to a blending options. If you double click on color overlay, it's gonna bring up that specific effect. And if you were to double click on gradient overlay, it's gonna bring up the gradient overlay. So what I wanna do is double click on gradient overlay and make some changes to this guy. Now it's a pretty big window, so let me just move it out of the way a little bit. Here we go. All right, so I would make the changes like I would normally do. I wanna go with a black gradient overlay. So over here, I'm gonna double click on this color swatch, switch it over to black. And because it is going to a transparency, I'd like it to go into itself. So I'll choose another black here. And it's just gonna uh, create a smoother transition in here. All right, I can continue to move these guys around as needed and you see it being updated over here. Maybe I wanna choke up on this guy a little bit. All right, I'm gonna click okay to accept that change. Now, let's take a look at what's going on here. I could actually click and drag this guy around just to have some focus going on right in here. All right, you could scale this guy down if needed, but what I wanna do is actually just drop the opacity a little bit. There we go. Click okay to accept that. And now we have this awesome focus going on in here. If I click on this little eyeball here where it says effects, it's gonna to toggle the visibility for all of the effects at once. Over here, we could uh, choose to just target one of the effects at a time. All right, we could also save this guy off and use it later on. So a way you could do that is over here in the styles panel. If you hover over an empty space, your cursor is gonna change up and you're gonna have this little paint bucket there. So if you click right here, you're gonna get this guy. You could name your new style. Right here, this guy's already checked for you. It says include layer effects. This one's not checked, the one that says include layer blending options. You could check it, but basically it's unchecked because we didn't make any changes to these guys over here. I'm gonna hit cancel to get out of that. Another way to do it is right over here. We have this button that's gonna allow us to create a new style. Clicking on that, it's gonna give us the same window. So I'm gonna hit cancel to get out of that. Basically, we're saving these settings so we could use them on a future project. All right, so far I've just been playing around with the photo and the image here. So let me switch over to this other tab. We could also play around with some shapes. So over here in the tools panel, I've got my rounded rectangle ready to go. You can just hit the U key on your keyboard if you wish. Clicking and dragging is gonna draw out this new shape. Now, I already don't need the properties panel at the moment, so I'm gonna click on this guy right there and it's gonna tuck it away for me. Back in the styles panel, I wanna get rid of all these guys because I'm not playing around with an image or a photograph. So over here in the flyout menu, I'm gonna switch over to maybe buttons, clicking on that. Now, again, it's gonna ask us, do we wanna append them? I actually wanna replace them. All right, so we get some crazy looking buttons over here. So I'm gonna click on a couple of them just to see what happens. This is a manhole cover and we get that type of effect. Over here, this one's pretty cool, rounded recessed. I actually use this one often and then make some changes because you notice maybe the stroke might not be exactly what you need or maybe you wanna make some changes to the gradient. All right, so these are just like starting points. You probably wanna change the colors of these guys. Over here, we got angled spectrum, but these are great jumping off points to make some better effects later. All right, over here in the flyout menu, I'm gonna switch over to glass buttons. All right, I really like these. You get some clean effects really quick. Clicking on these guys, there you go. Just uh, pretty much the same effect, just different colors. All right, back in the flyout menu. Let's see, if you wanted to use any of the textures or web styles, you would just go with them right here. Same deal, it just goes ahead and replaces them. Now, the cool thing about the web ones is you would have like buttons in different states. So like here you have a red gel, uh, but then like maybe right here, this is what it looks like, uh, uh, depressed, and right here it looks like when it's pressed down. All right, so let's get rid of this shape. I'm gonna hit the T key on my keyboard to bring up the type tool. Click once in the center of my document. Now with the caps lock on, I'm gonna just type in Adobe Grind, all right? And uh, if you wanna make the text bigger, 
A uh, quick way to do that is hold down the command key and that's going to give you this little bounding box here to allow you to transform this guy. So click and drag on one of the corners but hold down the shift key to keep your proportions and if you introduce the option key it's going to grow out from the center. Alright so right there looks good to me. Command enter to accept that change and I'll get rid of the caps lock. Alright there we go that looks pretty good. Now over here in the style panel I'm going to click on this little flyout menu scroll through until I find text effects 2. All right, we want to go ahead and replace this. Now I want to add the other text effects as well. So back to the flyout menu, right here it says text effects and we're going to append these guys. All right, so again, hover over them or just click around and play around to play around with them to get the different effects up here. So I'll click on this guy, right away I get that awesome effect. It already looks great as is, but I could go back in there and start making some changes, maybe add like a bevel emboss or something. All right, click on this guy. That looks fantastic. It's a little satin effect uh, with a really cool like chrome outline on there. All right, so there you have it, folks. That's a quick look at how to use the styles in Adobe Photoshop CC 2014.